Good morning and welcome to church this morning. Uh, Johnson will be preaching on the road to Emmaus and, uh, and we'll hear from him later. Let's, let's open with prayer. Loving God, we come this morning to worship you. And as we come, we confess that uh, anything that we need to confess before we come to your presence. Lord, sometimes we look at our life and we think we haven't done anything major. But it's not so much what we've done, it's been our relationship with you. Lord, sometimes we have marred that relationship through a cushion type of Christianity where we treat our faith like fast food. We gulp it down without stopping to nourish on what you have. So Lord, we pray that we would dwell on your word today. We pray that uh, you would just give us a depth of faith that would strengthen our relationship with you. And from that, the things that we want to do that are not of you would vanish because of the presence and the relationship we have with you. And we pray that that presence would, would also affect the way we treat other people. Lord, give us a heart that is willing to forgive as we are being forgiven. Give us a mind that is willing to be accepting of people who whose ideas are different to ours and though we may dif differ to love them just as well. So Lord, we pray for a depth of relationship, a strengthening of our faith, a renewing of our mind and a hope that no matter what the world may throw at us or what may circumstance may throw at us, we, we, we know that we can trust deeply in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading today is from Luke chapter 24. Reading starting to read at verse 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked, they discussed these things which with each other, Jesus, sorry, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus came along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here, there in these days? What things, he asked them. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, this is the third day since this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who had said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe, to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things? and then enter the, his glory. And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he, took, when he was at the table with them, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Then they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and he appeared to Simon. 
Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, church. Uh, thank you, Russell, for the reading from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Uh, my theme today is you never walk alone. Jane with Jesus. You never walk alone. This year, our Easter season has fallen during the COVID-19 pandemic. A time when we are secluded in our homes and told to wrap our faces in cloth if we dare to go out for groceries or supplies. Walk into the grocery store and you see people wandering quietly through the aisles with gloved hands and masked faces. Get too close and you will register a wide-eyed look of alarm on the face of that passerby. We are in hiding from invisible beast. The beast is what are people naming the virus? It attracts ferociously in the night with spiked fevers, X lung binding, and hallucinations. COVID 19 is a breathtaking virus. It steals the breath from people's bodies in a particularly terrifying way. And this situation is really terrible. It is strikes sudden, leaving us frightened and breathless, with no cure in sight. The only thing we can do is hide away, covering our noses, faces with cloth, hoping to keep the aggressive beast away from our lungs. COVID-19 has brought fear among us. The whole world is under fear. Yet, I'm always being reminded through the scriptures, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. That is in Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. I don't know if you have ever thought of it this way. That the Bible is a book of advice for travelers. Everyone in the Bible is on a journey. In the Old Testament, they are journeying to the promised land. In the New Testament, it is to the kingdom of God. According to the Bible, all of us are travelers. We are travelers. There are some books in the Bible, such as Exodus, that read like a travel journal. There are other books that give flat-out advice on how to get along on your journey, like the book of Proverbs. There are some, like the book of Psalms, that contain what are called pilgrim songs. So the 23rd Psalm is a pilgrim song. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's for travelers. It's for travelers. In the New Testament, it is just the same. Jesus said, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. That meant that he was always moving. He had no permanent place. He just kept moving from place to place. He recruited people by saying, follow me. He never said, sit down next to me for a while. And we have a little lesson here. He said, follow me. Keep moving. Keep moving from one place to another. Which means the son of man has no place to stay. He was a wanderer. Moving from one place to another. So the best Travel advice of all in the Bible is advice that Paul gives to the Corinthians. 
He said all you need on this journey is faith, hope, and love. As you are traveling this journey, you only need faith, hope, and love. That's all. Travel light. Don't carry too much. Faith, hope, and love. And he said the greatest of this is love. The greatest of this is love. So which is interesting because he wrote to the Thessalonians and used the same trinity of virtues. Faith, hope, and love. Only he told the Thessalonians the greatest of this is faith. So there's difference in emphasis in giving advice to travelers. Depending on your need, where you are traveling, where you have been, and what you have been through. But the advice is essentially the same. Travel light. Faith, hope, and love. Don't get bogged down having to worry about your baggage. To worry about a lot of things. Don't get preoccupied with the wrong things. Don't get concerned about things that are on the periphery of life. The things that are not essential to life. Because you'll miss the joy of the journey. You'll miss the joy of the journey. That is why when anybody asks Jesus advice on how you travel in this life, how you get to the kingdom of God, he always gave the same advice. Travel light. Like the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and said, how can a rich I reach the kingdom of God? Jesus saw that he had many possessions. He said, you don't need all this baggage. Get rid of them. That is the way to the kingdom. So what he told him was as simple as what Paul told the Corinthians. Paul said, all you need is faith, hope, and love. Jesus said, all you need to make it in this life is love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And your neighbor as yourself, that's all you need. You don't need all these other things. You don't need them. That is the first thing that the Bible tells about our journey. It says travel light, but it says something else. The second thing it says is you never walk alone. When you are traveling, you never walk alone. The first one in the history of the Jews, which appears in the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter are God's instructions to Abraham and Sarah to leave your country and go on a journey. And I'll show you where to go. For the rest of their lives, they were traveling. They were traveling. So the central story in the Old Testament is the story of the Exodus. The Jewish people traveling across the desert, wilderness for 40 years, they said they didn't walk alone. God accompanied them all the way. They said they could see him. He was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. Can you see that? They were always traveling. No sooner did they get settled down in the promised land, they had to pick up and go on another journey. This time into exile, to Babylon, a trip that nobody wanted to take. To their amazement, they discovered that God accompanied them on that trip too. That's why the psalmist sings in Psalms 139, verse 7 to 10. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the feathers oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. God is always there, wherever you are. So that is the second thing the Bible says about your journey. You will never travel alone. And that is exactly what Luke says the resurrection means. It says, we don't travel alone now. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. So, he tells the story of the road to Emmaus to illustrate that it is a travel story. Two people walking down the road to Emmaus. We don't know who they are. We do know what they are, not among the 12 disciples. We assume that there are some of the followers those people who heard Jesus say, follow me. And he took literally, him literally. 
They followed him from Galilee all the way to Jerusalem. There must have been a very large group of followers. And these two people on the road to Emmaus were probably among them. So Luke says that the name of one of them was Cleopas. That is about all we know about them. It is interesting though that there is a man named Cleopas who is the father of a bishop of Jerusalem. Even more intriguing is the fact that in the Gospel of John, one of the Marys who was at the cross, according to John, was Mary, the wife of Cleopas. So it would very well be this man. If so, then the other man walking down the road with him isn't a man at all. It may be his wife, Mary. They are going home. They are leaving Jerusalem after the crucifixion. Despondent, defeated, discouraged, but they're going home. Now going home. Now it is interesting to speculate on who they were, as I've just done. But that is not why this story is in the Bible. If this event had happened to one of the twelve, then that would be reason for including it in the text. Because the twelve had superstar status in the church. And anything that happened to them was remembered and recorded. But if there is an anecdote about some who is not an apostle, just as nobody, it is not there because this event happened to them. It is there because this event can happen to you. If it happened to them, be prepared for it to happen to you. I know it can happen. Cleopas and Mary, or whoever it was, walking down the road, talking it over, their hopes extinguished in one fellow soup. One sudden and ruthless blow, just gone. There's nothing they can do about it. It is over. They are helpless when you look at it. A stranger appears and walks down the road with them. The stranger says to them, excuse me, I could help, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation about some terrible things that has happened. Tell me about it. What really happened? Cleopas says to the stranger, you must be the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about the news that has happened. You must be a stranger who lives here because the news has been spreading like them. He told him about Jesus, the mighty prophet. How he was arrested and how he was tried unjustly. And how he was crucified. Then Cleopas said, a strange thing happened. Some women visited the tomb. It was empty. They saw an angel who told them, he is not here. He's risen. He's gone. Some others came later and saw the same thing. The empty tomb. Although they didn't see the angel, then they said, we don't know. It is all so strange, all these events. Anyway, it's all past now. It's all over. We are going home. We are going home. And that is what we have yet. Okay. The stranger speaks. You know, it was all prophesied. Then he gives them a Bible lesson. They walk down the road. Till they came to a little town called Emmaus, seven miles down the road from Jerusalem. So the stranger appeared to be going further. They said, will you stay with us? It is getting dark. Why don't you have a meal with us? So they go in the inn at Emmaus and sit down. The stranger takes the bread and blesses it, breaks it and hands it to them. They recognize him. It's the Lord. That was something new. It is the Lord. They recognize him immediately through the breaking of the bread. It is the Lord. They say it. Then he's gone. He disappeared from them. They said to each other, it was him. He 
was here with us. They rushed to Jerusalem and told the eleven, the Lord is risen indeed. He's risen. He was with us. We saw him. He's alive. Such a lovely story. It is the communion story. The church saw it that way from the very beginning. Even today, it is most often interpreted as a communion story. It says that when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, Jesus always the host. That is very important for us to know. But what I want you to see is that before it is communion story, it is a travel story. They are traveling. Two people, discouraged, despondent, confused, angry. They are traveling. Did you see those pictures of the work of the Tenados in Albana two weeks ago? You can say a week ago. That terrible devastation. Are we seeing on the news the people who are dying of coronavirus? The looks on the people's faces where people think you think they've lost hope. And that is what is happening. That is like the spiritual landscape of so many lives, desolation and devastation. The vision that these people had of what life could be is now dead to the ground. The hope that they had in this man is now gone. He's gone. The hope is gone. He's nowhere to be found. I know you have walked down in a mouse road. I suppose all of us have done that. We have walked down a mouse road. We have lost our hope. Angry. That is what makes it so desolate. Because nobody knows what you have been through. And your, your, your fear nobody real cares. You fear that nobody cares about me. When you are on the road to a mouse, you are asking questions that have no answers. Because it's not a good state. Luke says, what Easter means is that you are not alone. Luke gives us that affirmation in a story. John puts that same message on the lips of Jesus when he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you. I will send you the Holy Spirit who will be your comforter. You will never leave us. Meaning that he's always there with us. Showing that God is always present with us. What I would have you notice in this wonderful story is the way he comes to us. They didn't recognize him. They thought he was a stranger. Which means if you are not alert, you will miss him. Because he touches our lives so gently. Sometimes it's not so gently, but most of the time it is just a nudge to move us along our journey. They came to an inn. The text says, he appeared to be going further. He appeared to be going further. Which means he doesn't even push himself on us. It means he never wants to be where he's not wanted. You know that beautiful image of Christ in the book of Revelation. The one they made painting of Christ at the door. Look, I am standing at the door knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him. So he came as a stranger on their journey and ended their lives quietly. But they had opened their doors. But here's the final thing to be said when you meet Jesus in your struggles and understand the hope he offers. You find the motivation to share the good news with us. No one knows for sure where a mouse was. It appears that the town itself doesn't exist anymore. But a mouse doesn't need a physical location. Where is your mouse? Where is your mouse? Where you are traveling on a journey? Where is the place in your life when you are grieving and hopeless and the presence of Jesus become real to you and you turned around and went back to share your joy with others? That's what the disciples did. Where is your mouse? 
Where is your amounts? They went through times of terrible struggle and persecution after Christ left them. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, they found a joy so great that they were motivated to share it with everyone they meet. Jesus knows our hearts. He knows our disappointments and our hearts. And that may be why he chose to return to his disciples in such an ordinary state. In the upper room, he showed the disciples his wounds. Look, it is I. And they saw it. On the road to Emmaus, he appeared as an average traveler. But each of the disciples experienced overwhelming joy and peace in his presence. And he so promises his presence to us today. Wherever our journey takes us, you will never walk alone. Jesus is there with you. You will never walk alone. Feel the presence of Christ with you on this journey when you are walking. Wherever you are, locked in your own house, will you feel the presence of Christ with your family on your own? Will you feel Christ is there with you? That is the reason of this story. Just to remind us that Christ is always present with us. For he said, I will not leave you alone. So I'm just encouraging you, brothers and sisters, keep traveling. Keep walking. Keep running. As you are running around your area, as you are moving around your area, whatever you are doing, Christ is with you. You may not notice it, but Christ is there with you. So don't even say any negative things about other people. Because Christ is present with you. He knows everything that you are doing. He knows your situation. Just to tell him, if you are worried, Christ will intervene in your situation. He even intervenes in your situation before you know it. Because you are a child of God. So by being a child of God, remain in constant fellowship with Jesus Christ. And be able to hear, be able to see him, be able to feel him when you feel angry, when you feel dejected, when you feel lonely, Christ is there with you. May the good Lord help us as fellow Christians. This week as we are moving on, let us just be reminded that Christ is with us. As we are taking our Christian journey, Christ is with us. You will never walk alone. Walk with Jesus Christ. May the good Lord bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray and thank God for what God has done to us. We need to confess to God. Reason, Lord, we are sorry that we fail to recognize you in our midst. That we are too preoccupied with ourselves. We are sorry that we let you down. That we feast and don't invite others to share with us. We are sorry that we welcome friends but not always a stranger. Or anyone who makes us feel uncomfortable. Forgive us Lord. Help us to be generous people. Our church, our homes, and our hearts. Always place places of welcome. Father, we thank you for helping us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray again. Living Lord, we bring you the needs of the world. We pray for those who consider themselves to be strangers, outcasts, those who are suffering from COVID-19. We pray for those who are on the front line, the doctors and the nurses who are dying because they don't have protective clothing. 
Help us always to welcome the stranger, whatever the cost. Not sitting comfortably ignoring people we think don't fit in. Not taking the easy way. May our homes and churches be places of welcome, hospitality, and love. That all may have the chance to recognize and see you in the warmth of those around us. May we pray for countries where food is now a shortage. May we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, for ways to help those who are less privileged, who are starving. May we not look only after ourselves, but seek to offer the same opportunities to others. Help us not to be selfish, but always to consider others. Lord, we long for the day when all in all our society will be equal. May we be part of making that happen. We pray for those who are lonely and have no one to eat with them. May we open our doors to our neighbors so that love and friendship can flourish and all can enjoy the feast. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May we receive grace. Lord Jesus, as you walk on the road to Jesus, to Emmaus, walk with us on the road we travel. Help us to know your presence with us and to be your presence to others. And at the end of the day, may we all enjoy a feast. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. Now you can take your cup of coffee and now sit and give a call to someone as you are taking your cup of coffee after this service. And then you enjoy your coffee with someone talking to someone on the phone. That's great fellowship. May the good Lord continue to bless you in this way. Amen.